and especially in the future, the growing interchain DeFi that just barely started. And so, you know, so, so suddenly this thing that we were doing anyway, that was the right thing to do anyway for to building our ecosystem, suddenly it was just way more important to, you know, for the Cosmos ecosystem than, than we ever expected. Welcome guys, welcome to another episode on the Cosmoverse YouTube channel and today I welcome Dean Triple from Agoric. Hey Dean, how are you doing? Hello, how, how, thank you for having me. I'm very yeah, excited. Yeah, 100%. Always pleased to have you on the show. Always exciting conversations with you. And today we will talk about Agoric and Agoric's involvement at Cosmoverse. So I think there are so many exciting topics to touch base today. Um, first of all, I think this makes a lot of sense if we just do a quick recap about Cosmoverse 2021. I remember your involvement was very spontaneous. Um, I remember we were talking to agency back and forth and uh, two weeks afterward, you were there with your team. Um, you had two keynotes, I believe, or one keynote and one panel, something like this. So you were involved very, very heavily, but very spontaneously. So could you maybe recap a little bit on Cosmoverse 2021? Sure. I was at another conference. I don't even remember which one it was. And, and Sunny came up to me and said, so you're going to Lisbon? You're going to Cosmoverse? She's like, what, what, what's Cosmoverse, right? And I tried to get the story. She's like, oh, let's see, you know, these guys that are in the ecosystem and they just decided to throw a conference. It's not, you know, it's all totally ecosystem folk that said, this is great. We're going to throw a conference and, and you got to go. Everyone will be there, right? And sort of this, this, at that point, you were like, you know, a half a day of stuff. And it just kind of, every time I heard about it, it's like, bro, he's like, I, I, I guess we're going to be there, right? And, um, uh, and, uh, and so you sort of got got momentum going where suddenly Cosmoverse was going to be a thing, you know, and it was going to be the sort of the place to be for anything in, in Cosmos. So, you know, I grabbed everyone I could that was not on the engineering side because they're busy coding. Um, and we showed up at Cosmoverse. And so I'm so happy you got me on stage. But, you know, that's one of those things where, you know, I'm always, as usual, preparing my talk at the last minute um, and, uh, 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 um, and, and just you know, then showed up and it was the best conference I had been at in a long time because it was sort of the right amount of new faces, the right amount of familiar faces, the right amount of technical, the right amount of, of you know, being about what the project are doing and where they're at. And so it just got me, such, it, it was just such a great immersion. Um, and we were, uh, you know, where we were at, right, we're driving towards getting the, the, the platform done. And we were already in this model of, you know, of um, mainnet zero, which was just get the Cosmos layer out, the consensus layer out, so our tokens would be distributed. We knew there was still lots of development to be done after that. And so we've got this staged plan of mainnet zero, which was going to happen just before Cosmoverse, right? Um, mainnet one, which is still in progress, which, is, which was all the all the platform and all the contracts that we built, which were the key institutions for the Agoric economy, Mainnet 2, which was then our reference partners and other people building on the platform, and finally Mainnet 3, which is all comers, anybody running anything permissionlessly. And so we were excited about that, you know, that, that we had sort of a coherent Mainnet 1 that we were working towards and all sort of thing. But it wasn't until Cosmoverse 2021 that we told people about that and we were talking to people about that. So we got, just before Cosmoverse, we got mainnet zero out and got tokens to all the people that had had, had invested in our equity rounds back in the, the, the early big bear market in 28, 2018, um, 2018 to 2019, which was, you know, a few heroes invested in this thing. Um, and then over 2020, we got a private round, private rounds in terms of tokens. And so we got all those tokens distributed. We got, we got, we got the, 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 the equity tokens out, the early investor tokens out, and then set up to do all the um, uh, private backers in, in, in the 2020 uh, and 2021 era. And so, um, so we're excited about that and then we're working towards mainnet one. But <clears throat> when we presented what we were doing and all of the staging, one of the key things of being surrounded by finally all the people we've been working with remotely for the last year and a half or whatever is you know they could understand what we were doing they could get excited about what we were doing and they could tell us 
where they valued what we were doing. And, you know, and, you know, I, I mentioned Sonny back to Sonny because he's, he's so enthusiastic. So it's very memorable when he's excited about something, right? You know, um, that he was like, oh my God, a stable token backed by Adam. We have needed that for so long. <laughs> And, you know, and, and then it's just like, oh, and you can use other assets in the ecosystem as well. So this was stuff that we've been working on for, you know, over a year in terms of design and architecture and all this sort of stuff, but it just resonated with what, you know, Osmosis wanted, with what, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, Gaia Hub wanted, with what several other projects wanted, where they wanted to be able to, you know, unlock the value of their asset token, their volatile token, and be able to use it in sort of the burgeoning Cosmos DeFi, and especially, you know, in the future, the growing interchain DeFi that, you know, that, that has just barely started. And so, you know, so, so suddenly this thing that we were doing anyway, that was the right thing to do anyway for to building our ecosystem, suddenly it was just way more important to, you know, for the Cosmos ecosystem than, than we ever expected. And so we started, you know, that, that meant that it was going to, you know, we had to be a lot more careful about our security reviews. We had more things we had to make sure we could think about in terms of volume and other collateral types. So that did increase its scope a little bit, but it was what we were already doing. And so, um, and so we, we, we ramped up and that became really, you know, that's really our focus is get that out in a way that, 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 that all those people at Cosmoverse One will be excited about what they inspired. <laughs> That's my Cosmos verse one story was was getting getting the kick in the pants on 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 how important inter and IST would be for the the Cosmos inter uh, ecosystem. And yeah, and uh, we are so honored that you enjoyed Cosmoverse uh, so much. And um, yeah, Sunny was also like a great support for us. <laughs> uh, he um, we restarted Cosmoverse with an idea of you know just setting up a meetup with. 50 people, 100 people. And Sunny said, no, 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 we're not doing this here. Yeah, doing it <laughs> a little bit bigger. And yeah, then it evolved and Cosmoverse became what it yeah, has become. Um, but yeah, uh, touching, um, you touched Inter very briefly. Um, so you mentioned on a recent live stream with Zeki and um, CryptoCito that Inter was basically born at Cosmoverse. So can you dive deeper here? That would be like interesting to know what happened there behind the scenes, because I was just busy with setting up Excel sheets and guest lists and, you know, yes, coordinating yeah. the coffee. So it would be cool to basically- and what happens when your speakers time. run over their time slots? I apparently yeah. ran over my time slots. I had no idea. I could not find the clock on stage. I was so excited about what we were doing. So so now I get heckled by uh, by Cryptocito and, uh, and your host and stuff. Um, so, so it was not actually born at Cosmoverse. Um, the, you know, the, the, the architecture of Agoric that we worked out in, I don't, you know, uh, very early 2020, um, where we brought in, you know, Dan Robinson, Zucky, our RMIT advisors, um, uh, James Prestwich, I mean, a bunch of others to walk through what do we need for a platform for lots of developers to be able to, you know, build fast, earn fast. That's our, sort of our mantra, sort of that end to end of I'm a new developer to, to crypto because I've been a fintech developer for 10 years and, you know, crypto hasn't been usable to me till now. So I'm a new developer. I've got an idea I want to be able to get from, you know, building it on through to deploying it and you know, making money or, 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 or making it valuable to people, you know, what's, what all do I need for that? And we looked at what was broken in existing economies. We looked at what, you know, in existing crypto economies, what was problematic. Um, and, you know, if you think about things like um, ETH, where you use ETH to pay gas fees, you know, if gas is like rent or your electricity bill, it's like you're paying your rent with Apple shares and you can do it but it's not a great economy. It's not efficient for rapidly growing small businesses that work to, can work together well. Instead, all we can get are crazy stuff and monolithic things, right? And, and it's hard to have small things that add value. Um, and that's what you need to really get, you know, a million developers to be able to grow in this space is they got to be able to come in quickly and not have to think about foreign exchange every time they want to be able to, to, to cooperate with some other application in the, in, in the space. And so we knew, and I really tried not to, but we knew that we needed a stable token that was intrinsic to the Agoric economy to be able to have gas fees paid in a stable token. So you could tell, you know, so you could have a long lived contract that it could have a budget that it knew it could pay its, you know, it could pay its, uh, uh, you know, uh, helper contracts or its gas prices, what have you six months from now. And the value would be about the same as what it was 
paying now. So we knew we needed a, a stable token sort of intrinsically, and we knew it was wired into how it is that the the economy would re, would reward stakers, right? We we you know that 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 for proof of stake the value of the staking token has to grow with the size of the economy that's running on top of it, or you can end up with, you know, with, with a runaway economy that's very exciting, but it's, it's standing on stilts, right? It's got, it's got no um, uh, uh, staking capacity underneath it. And so, so the staking capacity has to grow. The network value has to grow with the economy. And most chains don't have a model for that. They don't have a story for that. They don't understand how that works. And so that ended up becoming one of the drivers that led to what the time ended up being called run, um, you know, as our stable token, that was, that was sort of a necessary part where the fees from that would reward build stakers to robustly operate the Agoric network. And so that was always a part of that, but it was, so what happened to Cosmoverse was I mean we already had the model people would bring over you know Adam or or Osmo or or or, or whatever um, and um, uh, and be able to use it as collateral and that'd be important um, but it you know that was it would be important for them to when we had a thriving economy for them to be able to bring it over and borrow IST to participate in the economy on on, on Agora. And we were all doing this design before there was, you know, the, the original design of all this was before IBC had launched, right? So it was before there was any inkling of osmosis out there, before there was any inkling of the, the, the kind of cross-chain uh, DeFi that we're starting to see appear in, in, in Cosmos first. And so, you know, so we had a model, we knew how it would work, but we really wanted to enable all these people with all these assets to come over and participate in our, you know, easily programmable economy. Well, so come now, IBC is launched, people, is, you know, things are starting to get connected. Suddenly, oh, right? <laughs> this ecosystem outside the interchain ecosystem is now a thing, right? It's now, you know, 10 billion plus dollars of thing, right? And, and, you know, lots of people throw around high flying numbers, but, you know, I came from FinTech before I've launched lots of companies. $10 billion is a really big number. That's a market worth going after and IST supporting that market and in enabling those 10 billions of dollars in assets to suddenly be more efficient cross-chain. I mean, DeFi summer in many ways was enabled and launched because there were stable tokens, right? Because you could now do options over here that would then settle in a stable token because you could easily move from one to the other because they were all kind of based around the same value point. The fact that there were multiple was fine, but the main thing is I could now figure out how to, you know, get out of one contract and into another or hedge one contract against another because I had comparable prices and, and, and I could settle one and then, you, you know, and use the assets in another and all that sort of thing. And so currency really makes a difference. A stable token really makes a difference doing that for, for the interchain, you know, suddenly it just kind of all clicked. And now, and now this thing that we were doing anyway for good and valuable engineering purposes suddenly had, you know, a business purpose. So it wasn't a pivot, but it was really a, a strong change in emphasis and excitement that came out of that. And it sort of gave us, it, 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 it tuned up the narrative there that really made a difference for, you know, for rallying what we were doing around that engineering work and, you know, getting you know, being able to explain to our security auditors why it was important that this be right and being able to talk about, you know, understand how critical good liquidation process was and, and why, you know, and, and tell the story so that Gauntlet would be excited about doing automated modeling of our system to be able to make sure that as IST rolls out, it adapts well to, to you know, because to the, the growing and changing interchain market because you know if there's one thing that we know happens you know whether you're going up or you're going down things change and and being able to adapt to that economically to remain solvent stable and so forth across the evolution that we expect over the next several years is just wonderful so so all of those were you know came out of having a bunch of people all in one place excited about the technologies that, that they shared, the connections that we could now make, and you know, and, and to some extent, the competition that you know, the sort of the, the I'm doing this and we're going to get there first. Oh, you know, right? You know, so the the, the coopetition, as they call it. Yeah, and with, with all of this in mind, you mentioned the also the potential impacts of IST for the interchain because um, you elaborated it quite precisely. Um, I mean, before Osmosis was launched there was barely something going on in the interchain. And then all of a sudden the 
a grenade exploded and then we saw so many impacts from that. Um, but now the question is when IBC is coming uh, to the interchain, um, I think we'll see lots of impacts because of this. And uh, besides now, as you are like also involved at Cosmoverse and um, you are basically coming to Cosmoverse at a very, very exciting stage of Agoric and Inter. So could you talk a little bit about this? Um, first of all, the short-term impacts of IST on the interchain and what it means for like the timeline regarding uh, attending Cosmoverse? <laughs> um, so, okay. So we are working steadily to launch sort of MVP of IST where, you know, the important things, you know, if you've heard the term MVP, minimum viable product, you know, you want it as minimum as possible, it, but it must be viable and it must be a product, right? Um, and so that involves, you know, robustness work, um, performance work, security audits, that kind of thing. Um, and so that's all ongoing. Um, our target is Q3. Now, turns out June was a bad month for us you know, because we all went to, uh, you know, we went to Lisbon. It was at the height of all this um, uh, you know, the, sort of the late stages of COVID. We all came back and we kept going and it was awesome. We went to a recent conference in Austin, came back, and many of us were sick. So, so for Cosmoverse, everyone, if you're traveling, be careful, um, because you might lose some time on your project, and that's just way too expensive. But be careful, but still, you know, come join us. Um, uh, uh, so, so we are targeting Q3. We have a lot of work to do to get out the launch of our platform. So the, the launch of the JavaScript platform that, that, that the builder DAO, the, the staked build holders can then launch other systems on. And that requires IST as a stable token, right? The economy and reward structure requires. Now, Agoric ecosystem doesn't require any particular thing about that other than it provide that so that people in the future that are building and extending the world on Agoric can do so with a stable token nearby. The rest of the requirements come from the ecosystem, come from you know, the needs of you and you, you know, I mean, all, of, of all those folks out there in the audience. And so, so for example, it's targeted to have parity with the dollar uh, simply because for whatever reason, more people can handle that in their accounting. And so it's an accounting and business convenience. Um, you know, if, if, if that became untenable for some reason, yeah, a quirk is perfectly fine. If it's pegged to the Euro or if it's pegged to the Canadian dollar or Australia, you know, I mean, it doesn't really matter, right? What matters is that its value about six months from now in rough kind of terms is about the same and it moves smoothly rather than, you know, up and down like, like, um, like uh, volatile assets, like, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, Osmo, Adam, Gold, Apple, you know, <laughs> any of those, right? Um, so, uh, so, so there's launching the platform and then launching the inter protocol on top of that. Because of Cosmoverse, because there was these people outside of Agoric suddenly interested, among other things, we wanted their expertise, but also we wanted to make sure that we satisfied their requirements and that, that, that they got a sense of engagement, that this was not just a thing for Agoric. It was not, you know, ha, 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 now you're using a stable token. You got to buy into Agoric. You have to have Agoric token. None of that. You can, you know, use it, trade it, whatever. And it can end up being backed by other, by tokens across the ecosystem that the people with, with you know, in the builder DAO will decide what those are. From the point of view of of you know growing and keep growing IST while keeping it solvent and stable and being something that can live for a long time and be really useful, um, so so you know our target is getting that out Q3, which is you know right on the cusp of when Cosmoverse comes out. <clears throat> so if we get done early, it'll be shipped and up for Cosmoverse. If we don't, then I'm not bringing any engineers, but I'll have a lot to say, um, you know, and, and, and indeed at Cosmoverse. So the kind of thing is, A, you know, we've, we, we just got back, uh, you know, first draft of our security on, 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 the, on all of the code. And it was, it was extremely good. It came across really well, not just in terms of, I mean, I think Jesse Irwin, our director of security, uh, talked about it um, at, our, at our community call. Um, so, you know, so, so, so that came across really good. Not, not only, you know, did they like the code in the architecture, but the overall 
component DeFi, Lego, et cetera, architecture of Agoric, they understood, they got, they could tell where it was used. They saw how it was valuable and they could really articulate that. And so that was just a really, you know, that was a really exciting, positive feedback for why we do this. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but so, so what are the things we want to be able to talk about at Cosmoverse? Other collateral types, you know, what are people, you know, how is the community going to decide that? How is the economic committee going to determine that going forward? You know, and because we've had several people that stepped up and they want their platform to be, uh, you know, to, their token to be one of the collateral types. And we absolutely, Agoric absolutely supports that. It's not our decision, but we absolutely support that. It is going to be, it's not even the, you know, the, the Agoric community's decision. It's going to be, you know, the, the, the um, extended, you know, uh, IST interchain community is going to be contributing to that. Um, so we want that. Um, our platform, I mean, part of the whole point of this is it's very extensible, right? And so we're starting out with minimum viable product. You know, viable is important, product is important, but minimum is important too. So many of the elements, we have an AMM. It's a simple AMM. It's a simple AMM that will be extendable with side order books, with, you know, uh, here's a 40 line, 50 line JavaScript program that can do a stop loss. Here's a, you know, here's, here's a place to plug in so you can tie into, um, some other chain like, you know, say network or whatever that, that, that will be rolling out uh, perpetual options. And so you can do a Delta neutral leg with the right, you know, debt limits. So not only can you mint with maker style vaults and take and borrowing or borrowing a small amount against staked build, but you'd be able to add in the future Delta neutral. I mean, you know, that if, if people want to build that or if we, or people ask us to build that, we could do that. And then the community will decide whether they want that. And the, you know, the economic experts will determine how much debt limit should you give for that mechanism, you know, versus another mechanism. So it gives us an ability to sort of responsibly evolve. And so starting those conversations at this Cosmoverse will help determine, you know, just like last Cosmoverse helped determine what happened this year, this Cosmoverse will help determine what happens next year, right? <laughs> so um, so I, I expect a lot of those conversations. Um, and then, of course, you know, post mainnet one, once we've launched that, we will absolutely be supporting the growth of it, we will absolutely be helping people build extensions and so forth. But we're also, you know, our longer term goal is this, you know, this platform in which you can do these really nice DeFi Legos to rapidly extend this kind of environment. And so, you know, and, and we've got reference partners we've been, work we've been working with, um, some of whom may be there. Um, to show off what they've been building on Agoric, and we'll be starting to talk to people about what they want to build on the platform as we as we evolve. You know, leveraging the presence of IST on the platform or not, but 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 that's a, an exciting thing to be able to build from to enhance that economy going forward. Yeah, I think this is also what makes me so excited about Cosmos in general that we basically see all these developments um, over over one year and, and then after another year. So basically Cosmos is kind of, you know, somewhat a tool to basically track the development of each project. And I mean, like this year, um, Agoric shipped actually um, almost the most of the things that uh, made me very excited about the interchain. So this will be like very interesting to see how IST then plays out um, over 2022 and then 2023 regarding TVL volume, et cetera, et cetera. So I think this will be also very interesting to watch. Um, last but not least, um, so as everything is so excited, I mean, we announced to bring Cosmoverse to Colombia this year to Medellin, um, also very close to DEF CON. So what were your thoughts about Colombia? Have you actually ever been to Colombia? And how do you observe the developer market in Colombia actually? So, um, so the answer is I have not been to Colombia. I don't think I've been to South America yet. Um, and I certainly had concerns about Colombia. So, so I can tell you my, and I had people ask me about, you know, I don't know, are you sure? Right. And, and, you know, Bogota terrifies me, right. You know, but, but, um, uh, so, uh, why don't you tell me about that? And I'll tell you a little more about, about what my thoughts after that. So, so tell me about how you, how you respond to people's, you know, legitimate concerns about Colombia. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, the problem with Colombia is that it has a dark history, obviously. Um, but I'm from Germany. I had basically, I have the, basically the same problem. So Colombia <laughs> evolved significantly over the past 20 years. Um, that's one thing. I think if Colombia would be so unsafe, also DEFCON wouldn't go uh, to Bogota. And Bogota is a complete different story. Bogota is much larger um, compared to Medellin. Medellin is much smaller. It's much more chilled. And uh, what also many crypto people overestimate in that sense is that they may be pretty famous in crypto and the crypto industry, but you know, most of the people in Colombia, they do not know our cosmos heroes, <laughs> so to say. It's so still a 4 million person city, I think. Right? Yeah, but if I would, you know, it's, 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 not, it's, it's not that dangerous. Of course, it's a large city and uh, I would be, I, I, I behave the same way that I would behave in New York City. You know, it's, it's a large city and with a lot of people, there's always kind of, a risk with pickpocketing and so on, but it's not the case that we are going to Medellin in the 80s or 90s. So this would be my take. And but of course, we are also very, very cautious uh, with everything mm -hmm. and take care that you know this weird elephant in the room about security in Medellin disappears. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing at the venue for with respect to this? <laughs> Um, I mean, the venue is very, very secure. Um, we uh, announced it already that it will take place in the Intercontinental Hotel, which is one of the best hotels in Colombia, actually. Um, there's a large parking space and um, there are the right people who take care of that, that only people who booked a room in the hotel or, you know, have a ticket for the conference will be able to enter. Um, there are um, have been a lot of uh, conferences at this hotel already, so we're not the first conference there. <laughs> and uh, around I that, and there was recent banking conferences and Chinese delegations and all this. Yes, stuff. actually, there was a Chinese banking conference before, just before, and a Hua, uh, Huawei uh, conference was also before us there. So, yeah, from that perspective, we are not a new case for them. And um, yeah, at all these side events, we you know take care of that we. You know, um, we, we take care the same way that we also took care in Denver, for example, at side events, you know, just people like that, just people who have a ticket are able to enter the side event, et cetera, et cetera. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's there aren't big security risks, I would say. Yeah, my, my so my model is that, you know, being re <laughs> being disciplined around there <clears throat> so that we can participate in events, but they're all ones that are well understood, you know travel in, 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 in at reasonable times of day, as opposed to crossing random parts of an unknown city in the middle of the night. And don't go looking for certain kinds of trouble that people might think is more available in Colombia than otherwise. And <laughs> I expect that this will, that, that this will be fine. Um, but, but, um, uh, but as I said, yeah, people were concerned. They're concerned about, you know, you know, both, uh, you know, uh, media highlights things that go that, that go bad, and so there are even recent stories. All of you know, but you get the same kind of stories in Chicago or LA. That doesn't mean it's not a little dicier than Chicago or LA, given that I know those places um, uh, and can speak the language. Uh, but um, uh, but I look forward to, to 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 visiting and and seeing people at safe venues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and on that note, also, I think one good advice for me is um, in, I think the translation is uh, don't show papaya, which is kind of a slang in, in Medellin, which means don't show off because there's no need to show off. So if you wear um, a very expensive arm wrist or like a Rolex or something, don't don't bring it to Medellin. Uh, so just <laughs> just be low key. Uh, you, you can don't bring it to the Times Square either. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I also love how, how you said that, you know, people, you know, there are also risks when doing it in a conference in LA or New York or Austin. I mean, I think two, a week or so before, before, um, before consensus, there was this huge school shooting in Texas. And I mean, lots of people in one room in Texas, let's say there's also kind of a risk that something goes wrong there yeah. as well. Um, so yeah, it's, I it's think there's just a bit than, serious yes. Again, we just be careful. So uh, now, ironically, since I started looking into this, um, uh, we ended up interviewing someone who, uh, you know, a a, a um, young uh, woman down who is right now in Medellin, you know, and has been for months, right? And just yesterday, um, our one of our economists, Jason uh, Potts, headed down to Medellin for another unrelated conference. 
you know, and and in the in the edges, he's putting together and driving the the economic committee for IST to put that together. But he'll be doing that for Medellin. You know, just like where where are suddenly all these people going to Medellin, totally unrelated to Cosmoverse? So <laughs> yeah, so I look forward yeah, to seeing this place. I think it will be a lot of fun. Um, so you're excited about Medellin? It's a travel destination as well. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. Well. Yes, my my I I try to squeeze in a little time on either side to 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 enjoy the place. But either we will have just shipped or we'll be just about to ship. Either one is going to be crazy busy, so I don't expect to have much time on either side. <laughs> what a pity! But maybe next year you have more time. <laughs> Another time. Uh, we have uh, more uh, more time to explore the destination wherever. I figure it... I will have enough fun at Cosmoverse that it's not an issue, right? Right? No, 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 you will have a lot of fun. I can guarantee that. We will go big this year. We will go big this year. So from that perspective. But yeah, um, anyway, I think this was like kind of eye opening for all the people who are curious what Agoric is working on right now, what they will bring to Medellin, what they can expect from Agoric at Cosmoverse. I think there are a lot of alphas to be spread or um, I think you will be able, maybe able to announce the finished product. product. So this will be also very interesting. Yep. And fingers crossed, maybe we also see the Ethereum merge just five days before that. So if we <laughs> add all these puzzle pieces together, this might be might be very, very interesting to be um, at Medellin at this time and listen to Dean's keynote. With that said, with that said Dean, uh, thank you so much for attending the show. We'll do more content pieces along the way towards Medellin. But until then, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Dean, for attending. And I hope thank I you see you soon. Thank you for having me. <laughs>